What's up Minecrafters, today we're going to be going through how we can add Geyser MC and Floodgate to create a cross-platform server on 1.20 or 1.20.1, whatever your latest version is. So for this we're going to need a server, we're going to need it on 1.20 or in this case 1.20.1 which is the newest version currently. This will also work for any other updated versions. Next up we're going to want to head over to the Geyser MC website, from here they've actually made it even easier than it used to be to download and you can simply head up to the top, of course links will be down in the description. So let's go ahead to download. And here we're going to be downloading both Geyser and Floodgate. The reason we download Floodgate is because that makes that easy authentication connection uh, between anybody on Xbox or Bedrock realistically, so they can just join seamlessly. So first let's go click Geyser, download that one. Underneath we're going to go ahead and download Floodgate as well. Once downloaded you can find them in your downloads folder and we can now exit out of this. Now what we need to do is we need to upload them two jar files onto our server. There's a few ways to do this, usually you can go up through your FTP file access and simply upload through your panel. However, as is the case with Multicraft, they usually limit it to a certain amount of megabytes. So for this case we're going to use FileZilla as this is 14 megabytes in itself just for Geyser and 10 megabytes for Floodgate. Using FileZilla we can very quickly and easily move files over or folders over from your server, delete them, edit them, manage them or move them from your PC and back. The files to the download will be down in the description, go ahead, download that, it's easy, it's free, it's open source. Next up to log into FileZilla to move our files, go to FTP file access, your FTP address on the right which is obviously blocked out on my screen is your host, your port is your port, your username is your username and your Multicraft password is the password that you use for Multicraft which you'll also use for FileZilla. You then put your host in there, your username, password and the port then quick click connect. As you can see on my right, once I do click connect, um, we have every single file, every single folder on our server and now we simply just need to move over from the left hand side which is our PC to the right hand side which is our server into the plugin section. So to do that, let's open the plugin section of our server leave this open right here. On the left I'm going to go to my downloads folder. So on the left hand side we're going to go and so we're going to select Geyser Spigot. We're going to move that right over to the plugin section and then we're going to find Floodgate in the list as well and I'm going to move that over to the plugin section as well. Now we can simply go ahead and close down FileZilla. Either start or restart your server at this point just so the server files can take effect and create everything they need to within your server. As we can see in the console we now have certain things coming up um, such as uh, Geyser Spigot, Minecraft Jar has been successfully downloaded and loaded. However that's not quite it. So first we just need to stop the server one more time and whilst that's stopping you need to take a note of your IP and your port so we're going to need this in just a second so once you've taken a note of that you're going to go over to files you're going to go to your config files it's the same if you're not using multicraft just go to your server files or your config files for your server and we're going to come down to config.yml and that's going to be for the guys of spigot section so let's just click on that to open it so first of all I'm just going to copy the port for our server again this is important so we can port forward properly and we're going to change this port over here so it matches our port number make sure there's no spaces afterwards and make sure there's one space between the bracket and the port number. Coming down a bit here, these are optional things like the MOTD message of the day for Bedrock. You can uh, change that over here, so MOTD1, and you can also change MOTD2. Just make sure that you do it between the quote marks. You can also change this right here, which is the server name that will be sent uh, to Bedrock Edition clients. You don't really have to mess around with anything up here, so let's just come down a little bit and let's just change this port over here. As you can see, for plugin versions, uh, it might be set to auto port, we'll also follow these, blah blah blah. Let's just change this port over here, change it to match ours. Last but not least, we want to change the address over here. We're just going to change this so it only listens to our IP address of the server. So let's just go ahead and change it over. Now if we come down a little bit, we're going to find one more area which is auth type. We're going to change the online to say floodgate. That way we're now leaving the authorization type as floodgate. Now you're pretty much done and ready to go. Let's go ahead and save and then let's start the server back up again. Everything's all loaded up so let's just make sure that we can now log in with Bedrock. Well that's a good sign our server's showing with a little green light, it's got the ping so let's go ahead and join the server. And there we go, easy as that, we've literally done it in about 5-10 minutes. And I'm sure you'll have no problem doing it too. However, if you do, just let me know down in the comments and I'll help to guide you. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye bye!